Dear guests, good afternoon and welcome to this absolutely amazing webinar about Paul Gauguin. We're going to talk about French Polynesia and I'm together with Laura. How are you, Laura? Hello, I'm fine and you? <laughs> and Nabil as well. <laughs> Hello, Nabil. Yorana. Yorana. So um, just a few points before we start. Uh, first of all, welcome to all of you. We have a lot of guests uh, that signed up and that, that are already guests um, for our line, for Ponon. We also have a few travel agents, so welcome to you, dear travel uh, advisors and, uh, and newcomers as well. So welcome to the world of Ponon, welcome to the world of Paul Gauguin. So we're going to talk about the ship, we're going to talk about the itineraries, we're a little bit going to talk also about the life there. Because as you know, when we prepare uh, an itinerary at Ponon, we always prepare it with the locals. And um, so we want to, to have the best experience of the destination with a beautiful ship and small ships. Because at Ponon, we like small ships and go where others don't go. So um, having said that, if you have any trouble during this webinar, there is like a little red panic button that you can press. And, um, and so you can, um, depending on, on, on the speed of your connection, you can, you can join again. So you have the little red button just in case. And then you can ask the questions, of course, on, on the right-hand side, on the little chat uh, board. But um, I would recommend you to listen first and then to ask the questions at the end, because we will take some time to answer the, the, your, your questions at the end. But we hope we're going to do a good job and you won't have any questions because we will have covered all the topics. So I would like, Laura, can you introduce yourself, please? Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Fred. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Laura Jordan. Uh, I am an expedition guide for Pono since 2019 in both polar and tropical regions. And I had uh, the amazing opportunity to uh, be a lecturer on board Paul Gauguin uh, in April 2023. So very recent experience. And I'm happy to share it with you. Yes, and Nabil as well. Hello, Nabil. Hello, hello, everyone. So uh, I'm in charge of UK and Ireland, but mainly uh, why I'm here is because I've been living uh, 10 years in French Polynesia. Uh, I've been that lucky, thanks to my parents. And as Laura, I will do my best to share uh, my, my stories as well. Yeah. Thank you, Nabil. So from my side, I've been um, working in Polynesia on a sail ship and on two different cruise ships, on Paul Gauguin as well, as a cruise director. So um, I know the, the, this place very, very well. Um, and this is the idea of this afternoon. We're not going just to talk about the itineraries and the ship. We're also going to, to talk about the mana, like the, the spirit that is all around this destination. It is absolutely a fantastic destination. And I do believe it is one trip you should do once in your life. I know it's a little bit far, but you really should go once in your life to French Polynesia and see Bora Bora, see Morea, and see all the other islands you have heard already. So, um, Maeva, so welcome in, uh, in Tahitian. You see already the ship, Paul Gauguin. And so we're going to uh, start a little bit, first of all, uh, to explain you that Paul Gauguin uh, Cruises joined the Ponant family in September 2019. So the Ponant Group uh, has currently 12 ships. So with Paul Gauguin, it's 13 ships. And um, Ponant has been named number one environmentally friendly cruise line. Uh, the Ponant Foundation was launched in 2019 as well. Again, focusing on peoples, on the poles, on oceans. And again, every itinerary we are going to build are, is going to be with the locals. And this is something very important and um, that permits also us to go to places and to meet communities that other lines um, don't do. So um, with the addition of Paul Gauguin, French Polynesia is the biggest destination in Ponant's global portfolio of destinations. Basically, we go everywhere around the world with the 13 ships. And um, so again, I would say also that uh, Paul Gauguin is not a Ponant ship. She was not built by Ponant like any other Ponant ship. She has her particularities as well. So if you've, if you've been on a Ponant ship, please don't consider this is a Ponant ship. It's belonging to the Ponant family. And uh, I would say the atmosphere is very international. You have a lot of North American guests on board as well. They really love the ship. They love the destination. They love the crew. And, um, and so we have a lot of repeaters as well. 
So I leave you speak on these slides. Yes. So some of you might uh, recognize my face, uh, my adult uh, face now. But just to tell you quickly how important uh, water element is uh, in French Polynesia. Uh, so everything is around water, and uh, and clearly to travel in French Polynesia without you know using traveling on this element uh, will be uh, missing half of the understanding and the discovery of, of, uh, of French Polynesia. So you see me doing some sports, uh, doing some, uh, some travels and, and, and also a few real pictures in a way. So just to show you that it's not just you know, uh, pictures that, uh, uh, that you, you can dream about, but it's actually reality uh, as well. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that, uh, Nadil. Uh, we're going to talk about the ship, so Paul Gauguin, named after the famous uh, French painter that um, that actually passed away in uh, in the Marquesas, in one of the of the groups of, of Polynesia. And I would say that um, the ship uh, it has been built to go inside the lagoons. So she has been especially built to go to these places, and she was built for the American market actually uh, in French Polynesia. She's been there for many, many years now, and she actually has her anniversary this, uh, this year, 25 years. So again, specially designed to sail in Polynesian waters, seven passengers deck. You have uh, 300 guests for more than 200 crew members. So the ratio is really good, and you have three different restaurants um, as well. Um, so again, up to 330 guests on board, but that is when the ship is really full, you know, when you have like the, all the triple and, uh, and all the, the, all the staterooms uh, like full. Five-star accommodation, this is the luxury uh, ship in French Polynesia. Um, a lot of different suites and staterooms as well. And the crew per guest ratio is 1.5, one among the highest at sea. As we said before, celebrating 25 years in French Polynesia, so the anniversary. So we're going to talk about the cruise experience, uh, the emblematic journeys and the new itineraries, um, a little bit more about the ship and the inside of the ship, and then we have a Q&A questions and the offer. You want to talk, Laura, about the, um, about the, the Paul Gauguin experience? Yeah, sure. So um, when you get on the ship, you really feel that you are in uh, French Polynesia. And uh, so they give you a small uh, tiare flower to put on your, on your, on your ear. Uh, you get inside the ship and then you have the Gauguin Gauguin. Uh, Gauguin Gauguin, they are a team of uh, real Polynesians that uh, sing songs, that greet you. They have the tattoos. They have the traditional costumes of uh, French Polynesia. And they are there all uh, do, during the whole cruise to, uh, to welcome you in any activity and you re can really feel the Polynesian spirit on board. They sing, they dance, you can learn how to... Uh, yes, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, actually there are also workshops on board uh, during the days uh, at sea or even if you don't want to go out and participate in an excursion, you can learn to dance, uh, you can learn to sing, you can learn also some uh, art craft that they make. You can learn to do that. And uh, yeah, it's a, a big enrichment uh, during the cruise, yes. Definitely, yes. A few more pictures. Yes, so <laughs> those are pictures that my parents took when we were living in Rayate Island. Um, and this is just to, for you to realize how deep uh, and complex the French Polynesian culture is. So for instance, on the left side of your screen, you will see a marae called Tapu, Tapu Tapuatea, uh, quite yeah. a long word. Uh, it's been built around the, the year uh, 1000, and it's one of the oldest temples in the, uh, in the Maori culture in all uh, Pacific Islands. And on the right side, you see still traditional ways of cooking it, uh, things, and also uh, pirogue, uh, so local spots. So it, it's way more than just beautiful islands and, and, and sandy uh, beaches. Uh, and, uh, and clearly uh, it, it has that culture aspect that the Gauguin and Gauguin uh, can also bring on board, which is really, really uh, interesting. So the ship um, has been an expert, as I said, in the region for the past 25 years. 
She mainly stays in French Polynesia, but she also goes sometimes a little bit more west. We're going to talk about it, to Fiji and to, um, to Aitutaki, to the Cook Islands and so on. Um, exceptional maritime routes. It's true that we do go to places that are absolutely amazing. A uh, different experience from our other ships. I said this at the beginning, that she's not a Ponant ship. She belongs to the Ponant family, but she has her particularities as well. Um, we, we are in French Polynesia, you know, like warm weather, so it's more laid-back international atmosphere. A human-sized ship, maximum 300 guests, all-inclusive experience, so all the meals. You have the minibar, um, uh, unlimited Wi-Fi, um, the champagne, uh, everything in, is included. I would say the service is excellent. The crew is amazing on board Paul Gauguin. And um, we talk about the, the mana. You know, this is like the aura. This is like something, the atmosphere that is in French Polynesia. That is really amazing. Like Polynesia comes from the Greek. Poly, many, Nesia, Nesos, islands. So many islands. You should know that in French Polynesia alone, there are more than 100 islands. And it's really like on a long way, it's like 4,000 167 square kilometers. That's more than 1,600 square miles. So from one group of islands to the other, you've got like 2,000 kilometers or 1,200, more than 1,200 miles. So it's a huge area um, in the Pacific. She has been, um, Paul Gauguin has been awarded many, many times, having the first prize uh, for small ship, um, best small ship uh, from Ocean Cruise Line, Best French Polynesia Cruise Line. Again, she is the expert um, in French Polynesia. Yes, there are other ships there, but they are not as experts. They don't have the Gauguin and Gauguin, which are really the ambassadors of the destination. And um, they don't have the experience. And also, they are not the five-star experience. And which I think that is, like the food is amazing on board, like with all the fresh uh, fruits, fish, and, and everything you will, you will eat, uh, it's just uh, amazing. The vanilla desserts from Taha, you know, the vanilla from Taha is really famous. I mean, just, just for that, I would go back on Paul Gauguin, you know, or the fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's really amazing. Maybe you can talk, Laura, a little bit about these landscapes. And we are in Bora Bora there, right? Yes, this is uh, Bora Bora. Uh, as you may know, uh, the Polynesian islands, uh, they are actually uh, old volcanic islands. So there used to be uh, uh, volcanoes that slightly, uh, with time, went down in the water. And uh, Bora Bora, um, so they had the, the coral reef that uh, uh, built around these islands. And as the summit went into the water, the, um, the coral reef stayed and the lagoon got created. And that's especially what we can see in Bora Bora. And actually, uh, Paul Gauguin um, uh, goes to a motu. So these... Uh, coral islands that are created are called motu in French Polynesia. And Paul Gauguin goes to uh, one of these motu, so you can also enjoy not only the main island, but also uh, the, the island uh, around, which is very special to Paul Gauguin as well. That is correct. So this is not uh, on, on scale, uh, but you have like an idea of the different areas we, uh, we go to. So French Polynesia is on the top right. Everything you see, the, the blue pins are all UNESCO sites. Um, you've got just below, um, you've got um, the Cook Islands, and then you've got Fiji and Samoa, and all the other spots going to the north of Australia, going to Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, are all itineraries we also do in 2025. So these are new itineraries for Paul Gauguin uh, as well. And this is what you were talking about, Laura. Mm? Bora Bora? Yes, Bora Bora is in the Society Islands. So Paul Gauguin goes each time uh, on the Society Islands on, on uh, every cruise, if I'm not uh, uh, saying anything wrong. And uh, some cruises go specifically to some archipelago. So mm. to the Marquesas Islands, for example, uh, to the Tuamotu Islands, um, and also to the Cook Islands, which is uh, very nice yeah. as well. Mm. Here Do you uh, see the sorry. slide of the geology, yeah. Yes. So, ah, yeah, yeah the here. geology. Here, each so oh, yes, exactly. On yeah, the left, I was, uh, talking it would about be that. like the landscape of Marquesas, you know, and then exactly. in the middle, it would be Bora Bora, mm -hmm. and on the right, it would be like the Tuamotu, like Fakarava the or Tuamotu. Yeah, Exactly, yeah. yes. And, uh, so and you can clearly say, see uh, the different phases. I can say also, uh, Fred and, and, uh, and Laura, 
uh, that depending on the geology, it has created some, some specific subculture depending on the archipelagos. So atolls are from Tuamutu Gambier, uh, the barrier reef and fringing will be more society. Uh, the Marquesas will be more just a, a rock in the middle of the ocean. And, and because of that geology, it, has, it was sometimes harder to live on these islands. And the best example I can give is the Marquesas. It was so hard to live in, the, in these islands that uh, they, they started to, to be, they had to be super smart with their hand. They created some tools and they created hands, the tattoos. So really depending on the islands and on the geology, you have some subculture. And uh, the paradise of Society Island is one of these subculture uh, that, that, uh, that Laura explained with Bora Bora as an example. Uh, but yeah, traveling on, on, on sea will allow you to discover those specificities as well. And between the different group of islands, like there are five groups of islands. There are Society, Tuamotu, Marquesas, Gambier, and Austral. And between each of them, it's always a different landscape. So it's like as you visit different countries in one same uh, voyage. And this is really mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Like in the Society Islands, you have Bora Bora, you have Morea, you have Tahiti, and then you've got some other itineraries we're going to talk about as well. So if you other landscapes we clearly see on these pictures, Yes. So these are, again, pictures that my, uh, my dad took uh, from, uh, well, clearly from, uh, from an airplane or directly from Rayate Island. And in front of, you can see uh, Taha Island. You can also see the reef, the barrier reef with the pass in French. Uh, and, uh, and those uh, will be similar to Morea Islands that you can see on the bottom right. Uh, the next slide is, is actually uh, uh, that island. So all of the, all of the city islands will look and have similar landscape as you can see here uh, on the screen. Yeah, when we talk about French Polynesia or any destination, a lot of guests might ask, what is the best time to go? Yes, uh, so it's quite, it's not, uh, it's not too complex. You have two seasons. You have, let's say, the, the a bit more uh, rainy season, which will be winter time for, for us. And the rest of the year will be uh, just great. Uh, humidity will remain always. Huh? Uh, this is uh, something that uh, uh, you will have all year long. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much my answer. What you what what do you think, uh, Laura? Um, for me, the best time to go to French Polynesia is uh, between uh, when the whale season. <laughs> uh, August, September. And you can experience right? yes, <laughs> October as well. Huh? And they can yes. sometimes start to come in August. So I would say if you are a marine mammal lover like me, that I would go <laughs> at uh, this time of the year. But I would also say that to experience the islands and the culture, the, the whole year is, uh, is nice in, uh, in French Polynesia. Yeah, but also I would say by experience that it's not sunny every day. It can be cloudy. It can be raining sometimes. Otherwise, it wouldn't be that green, that, that lush, you know. Um, but you know, of course, it's, it's, it's great weather. The water is so warm as well. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, I would say all year round anyway. And the landscapes, this is the island of Tahiti um, with a Papeete, like the, the main city and where the airport is as well. Okay, it's a long mm -hmm. flight, but um, I'd say it's really worth it um, to, yeah. to do that, that voyage. And you have a lot of companies that had economy, premium economy and business. So, um, you know, with your miles, you might, uh, you know, upgrade yourself or I think it's, it's, worth, uh, it's, it's worth the trip. You do a stop usually in the U.S. Am I, am I right? Yes. You do a stop in the U.S. Oh, it can then... be now. I think they open a new route through uh, Vancouver. Um, oh, okay. That's, that's okay. the second, uh, second option you, you, you currently have. Yeah. And, and of course, you can also fly if you are because, you know, the, this webinar... Um, there are some, some guests from, from Australia or from New Zealand listening to it. So just in case um, you can also, or in case you are there, you happen to be in Australia, you can fly from there, from Japan as well, um, to, uh, to French Polynesia. The diving is amazing, that's for sure. Yes. One of the best places to dive in the world. I mean, the paths oh, yes. in Pakara, Barangiroa <laughs> are amazing, yes. Yes. And also there is a, a diving team on the Paul Gauguin. So uh, yeah. it's... Uh, 
so there is um, you don't need to go outside and to go for a diving team uh, outside of the ship. You have your own diving yeah. team. So the the trip that goes should... for diving, they depart from yeah. the marina of Paul Gauguin. And it's a very experienced team. They know all the sites on every island. And uh, it's a very, very, I think it's one of the best places in the world to, to go diving, yeah, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. yeah, so there is a dive pool with a, with a dive master, dive instructor. You can do yes. your discover scuba diving. You can, uh, yes. you must be advanced to go through the pass, you know, because there is currents where the hammerhead sharks are, dolphins yeah. and, and huge fish. But there is a little bit, of, uh, there is current there. So you need to have the advanced um, certificate. Yes. But if you want to find out, we can, you know, we can of course, uh, give you all the information about uh, scuba diving. But And without any experience, scuba dive, I would say that yeah. you snorkel uh, and you have this kind of, of, of uh, landscape that you can see on the, on the screen. And to be yeah. fair, I had, uh, I had amazing memories and I still have those memories uh, without having uh, the ability to, to scuba dive. So even if you also, know, yeah. just like snorkel, will give you some some amazing uh, fauna and flora uh, visuals. Yes, Laura? so there are uh, excursions that are offered on, on Paul Gauguin, included some uh, snorkeling uh, excursions. And uh, it's also uh, one of the best spots in the world to go snorkeling. So these are uh, things that you can see during your snorkeling. These are pictures that I took on the Paul Gauguin trip. So uh, you can be sure that you can see this kind of thing. So this is Bora Bora, uh, corals in Moria. And uh, yes, definitely uh, I advise you to go. And this is uh, the pearl farm of Taha. Yes, there is also mm -hmm. one excursion that... Uh, so there is a diversity of excursion that allow you to touch a little bit of everything there is to see in Poly French Polynesia. And this is one that I really liked. It was the pearl farm of Taha where you can learn Uh, how the pearls, the famous Tahiti pearls, are made, and you can come back with a little gift as well. Yeah. So it's important to say that on board Paul, on board Paul Gauguin, there are not included excursions or zodiac trips and so on, like on other Ponon ships. So yes. all the excursions are um, proposed, and you have to pay them on board. There are half yes. days, just a few hours, half days or full day tours, and there is a huge choice offshore excursions. Yes. yes. And, so and I think this is your final point. It's, it's, I think it's yours, Laura. It was also to, to uh, uh, we talk a lot about water and this is clearly uh, the element of French Polynesia, but let's not forget that these islands are also home of so many beautiful things, for fauna, flora, uh, activities mm -hmm. that you can do. Those are just, again, some of my pictures. Uh, so you can find all of this Uh, as well, so we would encourage you to go and, and do some hikes or you know some tours on the on the jeep, or uh, you have so many things to to discover inland as well. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about itineraries. First of all, this is the basic itinerary, the smallest one. So you could combine this one, for example, with an extension to the Marquesas or to Tuamotu, uh, taking a plane. Um, so but that is the, the basic seven nights. So you start from Papeete, you go to Wahine, after you will go to the private island of Taha. There is a motu, like Laura was saying, a motu is an island. So it's a private island, like a day in paradise, as I call it. After we go for to Bora Bora, and from Bora Bora we go to Morea, and then back to Tahiti. So that is the short itinerary seven nights in the Society Islands. So the Tuamotu Islands are um, included in the other itinerary that is a little bit longer. You can see these pictures. I mean, every time I see the pictures, I want to go back there. You have no idea <laughs> how warm the water is and how the weather is, and especially how the people are. You know, the Polynesians yes. are amazing. Yeah. And then in yes. this part, when you, when you sail, you often see uh, dolphins as well swimming around yes. the ship or swimming around you if you are a scuba diver. Um, Uh, th this experience is is, is, a, is a great one. Yes, Fred, you were saying that uh, you have to go to French Polynesia at least once in your life, which I agree yes. with, but usually you will come twice, <laughs> three times, <laughs> four times. 
usually it doesn't stop to one time. <laughs> there is so many. But that, that, <laughs> and there are many repeaters on board Paul Gauguin. You would be surprised yes. how many guests come back. Yeah, but they don't yes. only come back for the destination. I would say they also come back for the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> this itinerary is the one including the um, the Tuamotu, so with Fakarava and Rangiroa. But it still has the same base of Morea, Wahine, and uh, Taha, and Bora Bora. You see, so additionally, we go to Fakarava and Rangiroa. Um, great one for diving. If you or snorkeling, great itinerary, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, the sea life is, uh, is stunning with, uh, with the turtles, um, the stingrays. And this is what you well. can get just snorkeling. So yes. this is like... Yes. Oh, is it you? Even more, of course. Who, who is that's that? Is it you? Nadine? Yeah, Nadine that's not me. That, that's the diving instructor of Paul Gauguin. But that happened on okay. one of our dives. And I was so surprised. I mean, seeing sea turtles uh, coming so close to human beings, I've seen that only in French Polynesia. Yes, 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 yes. You can also get very close to rays. To, uh, Sing rays, yes. And despite what you might think, stingrays are, are very safe, okay? So um, yeah. you, you, can, you can feed them, and then, you know, it's a very soft touch just when you, when you touch them. There is a very famous tour called uh, Sharks and Rays. Don't be scared. The sharks are mm. not fed in French Polynesia, so they, they will never attack you. So um, swimming with sharks and swimming with stingrays has been done for years and years and years without accidents, and it's a great experience. If you want to stay on the, board, on the boat, you can stay on the boat. But I would really strongly suggest you to do that tour. This is another great excursion you can do among coral. And um, yeah, yeah the, the, what you see underwater is absolutely um, yes. you know, crazy. It's, it's really, really nice. Yes, I would say that Paul Gauguin has the experience of uh, which operator to work with to get uh, the best experience of underwater sighting. Yes. Look at this picture. I love it. That's yours, yes. right? Laura. Yeah, it's mine. It was taken uh, on, a, on a tour in, on the lagoon of Bora Bora with one of, it was my, for, to be honest, my favorite tour. And uh, the water is so blue, as you can see. It's just, yeah. it's just amazing. It's, it's like paradise. And, and, and the great thing is very shallow. All right, so you can just walk yeah. and, and, and for, 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 for like uh, many, many, many like minutes, you just walk and you don't need to swim because you, you can still uh, walk uh, on the sand. And um, sometimes yeah. you have a stingray passing by or some fish. And um, mm -hmm. it's, it's true that it's a great feeling. We were talking about the pearls earlier on. That is also like a tradition in French Polynesia. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the tikis. The tiki tiki is yeah. from Marquesas, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, mainly. So back to the, the remark I, I was doing uh, initially uh, when we started the, the webinar. Uh, those people uh, back in the days, as you can see, it's just an island in the middle of the ocean. So they had to, be, to become really smart the way they were uh, going to feed themselves, so they created some tools, they created the tattoos, and also the tikis. So all these islands have a clear influence on, on who uh, those local population became. And this is like the kind of, of pictures, I think uh, uh, it's, it's quite yeah. uh, remarkable how diverse uh, those, uh, those islands are and how different from Rongiroa or Fakarava or Bora Bora, uh, the Marquesas, uh, are. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is a Fatuiva, and uh, our captain actually offered uh, uh, an evening cruise close to the after the the day of excursion on on the island. We went all along to get to see the island at sunset, and that was uh, really really nice. And I want to say that uh, the the bridge team also on board Paul Gauguin is uh, is really great, and it's also a possibility to go on the bridge and to observe the navigation, which I think you cannot do on all all ships you know that's really a, a privilege well, yeah. we're talking about the marquesas islands very soon we're going to see the itinerary that is uh, the longest itinerary we we have a few landscapes of the different uh, islands that is the one so um it will sail from uh, tahiti go to fakarava 
go to one, two, three, four different Marquesas Islands. We have different itineraries. And um, then also include Wahine, Bora Bora, Taha, and Morea back to Papeete. I would say from French Polynesia, this is what we would call the best of. Why? Because you see three groups of islands among the five groups of islands. And as Nabil and Loha were saying, all the landscapes are different. And the group of islands are completely different between the Society Islands, the Tuamotu, and the Marquesas. So if you want to see it all, that is the one to do. Like the 14 nights, 15 days itinerary, Marquesas, Tuamotu, and Society Islands. And then we go a little bit more west uh, to Fiji, Tonga. Um, I would say to more English-speaking countries as well, like islands. Uh, like, for example, the Cook Islands with... Um, with uh, Aitutaki and Rarotonga, the Fiji that are also absolutely amazing. The traditional dancers, yes, in, in Savu Savu. Um, I would say on, on each Paul Gauguin voyage, we want the culture to come on board. So there are a lot of uh, traditional uh, dance and music bands or groups coming on board in the Marquesas, but also in the Society Island. I remember having the children come and do a, a, an amazing show uh, for us. But um, the if culture... You in me, uh, Fred, clearly. I learned how to dance, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not to that level, but I can, I can <laughs> confirm. They are great. <laughs> yeah, they, they, are, they are good dancers. They have like a special move, right? It's like the, the girls, yes. but also the boys, you know, the men. Yeah. It's, it's very specific, yeah. It, it, but it's beautiful. But you, it's beautiful. But to get workshops on board, after one cruise, you should know how to do. <laughs> yes. Maybe, yes. And again, we're going to talk about the people, about the food, about the traditions. Yes. Of course, food is an, is an incredible part of the Polynesian culture. And uh, on some excursions, uh, actually on a lot of excursions, it is uh, included uh, some uh, a lunch, for example. And here you can see on the left um, photo a lunch that is uh, offered, I think, on a Bora Bora. At the end of an excursion, they have cooked everything for you. You reach there, you have the fish still grilling, uh, the potatoes, the sweet potatoes, the cassava, everything is ready for you. And it's really nice. And on the other slide, you can see uh, women also on excursion explaining how to make dry banana or dry coconut. So you will get to learn everything about uh, fresh food and uh, vegetables. <laughs> so a few views of uh, some other itineraries we have in um, going to the Tonga Islands. That's the one. So we're leaving uh, Papeete, going to Morea, Taha, the private island, uh, Bora Bora, and then Aitutaki, which is just a little piece of an island that is just paradise. A lot of honeymooners go there, um, and you have like this $1 island. It's just pure paradise, like just a small island in the middle of, of this, this lagoon. Uh, Aitutaki is the gem. And then we go to Tonga, uh, and to Fiji as well. Um, so, like, it's a it's a very good combination of French Polynesia, Fiji, Tonga, and um, and Cook Islands on 13 nights. We don't do this itinerary a lot, so you have like to check um, to check on on the with your travel agent or um, with the, with the, the the Paul Gauguin um, crew. So the complete journey, why? Because you can extend your dream to not only doing the voyage itself, not only doing the cruise itself, but also doing a pre or post program. So you can enjoy one or more nights in Tahiti, in Morea, in Bora Bora, in Hivaoa, which are in the Marquesas, like Nukuhiva, also in the Marquesas. So there are different names, you know, relaxing gateway, escape to serenity and so on. So a lot of different programs are available in really good, nice hotels, and uh, you can see like the, deli the breakfast delivery down left um, <laughs> in, in one of the hotels in, in Morea. It's, uh, it's, it's quite nice. And we're working with a Hilton, with an Intercontinental, um, so with, uh, with great brands as well. And on the Overscape, uh, we working in, uh, in Marquesas with some lodge, a bit more like a natural, closer to, uh, uh, to the 
the, the people. Uh, so you have a mix of, of everything, like really amazing brands, as well as really more typical and local uh, small lodges uh, that are family owned for most of them, if not all. Yes. Let's talk about life on board. So um, the more than 200 crew members will pamper you, that's for sure. <laughs> Again, it's a maximum of 300 guests on board Paul Gauguin. Um, everything on board will be in English and in French. You will see the main lounge with all the shows, the lectures. Um, there is a great band on board as well. Um, so this is where all the cultural activities would take place. You can see the band on the top left. And um, there is a bar, of course, also in the main lounge. Really a great area. As I said at the beginning, there are three different restaurants. Uh, one, the first one, L'Etoile, is like the main restaurant. You don't need to book. But for La Veranda and Le Grill, you will need to book. Uh, there is no extra charge. You just need to book to go into uh, Veranda and Grill because there is a, a limited uh, space available. And of course, you also have the 24-hour room service that is included. So if you don't want to have your breakfast in your stateroom or suite, you can. Um, I would say Le Grill is, is, is very spe specific for authentic Tahitian and Pacific cuisine. Um, the chef on board, uh, Paul Ellis, is amazing. Uh, he has been living in Tahiti for many, many, many years. And um, yeah, he will recommend you the best dishes, definitely. This is L'Etoile, the main restaurant, open seating. The wine is included. Um, I mean, all the drinks are included. Uh, and, uh, and as I said, the, 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 not only the food is amazing, but the service is excellent, is really excellent. And never forget to keep a little bit of space for the desserts, because the desserts are really, really to die for. <laughs> la, la Veranda is a bit more... It's great to spread. But it's true, it's true. I mean, La, la, la Veranda is a little bit more um, upscale, a little, a little bit more gastronomic restaurant, uh, if you want uh, to, to have dinner there. Like you, see, you can see this is limited space available, so you need to reserve. And again, it's no extra charge. And Le Grill, this is where the Polynesian cuisine and the, the Tahitian cuisine is, is proposed. In the evening, you know, it's really um, a, a nice setting under the stars where you can have dinner. But it's also a place where you can have your your breakfast or the tea time. You see there are tables outside covered or, or around the, the swimming pool as well at Le Grill. The spa and um, with algo terms, so you can have uh, spa treatments on board. And when we are on the island, the spa team is on the island. So when they have the, the massage table right there in a, in a, in a, in a scenery that is poof, uh, absolutely great. You won't see a lot of it because your face will be down, but, uh, you know, it's, it's <laughs> what you can imagine and you can smell and you can, you know, what's, what's going around. We were telling you at the beginning, there is a team of Gauguin and Gauguin, which are like the, yes. the Polynesian ambassadors that are staying on board yes. with you. And uh, yes. they offer like music, uh, uh, songs, uh, traditional. Mm -hmm. um, the cruise director is from Polynesia now. So uh, Hina Nui, and uh, so you know it's 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 a uh, it's a really great team as well. Do you want to add something, yes. maybe? Yes, uh, they are here from the beginning to the end of your cruise, and they are used to working with Paul Gauguin, so uh, they know everything. You can ask them questions as well. They can uh, um, help you in the ship, and they give shows in the evenings. They, you were talking about the restaurant, for example. They come and they play music uh, in the beginning of the meals in the beginning of the dinner, which also brings some uh, Polynesian atmosphere uh, right into your plate. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it I must nice say, having lived there 10 years, these guys, they are like local stars. You know, if you say that you've been working as Gauguin or Gauguin uh, to other French Polynesian, they will be like, no way, wow. So there is a true, true connection between the vessel, the crew, as well as uh, uh, with uh, French Polynesia. So what a better way to discover it. Yeah, the, um, the ports of call, we stay a long time in each port of call. And when we sail, usually during sunset, uh, then we uh, have the beginning of another 
type of, uh, of, uh, of entertainment. But I would say there are like two types of entertainment. You've got like the ship entertainment, like the theater, or you can go outside and look at the stars, you know, like sky watching, stargazing, or also um, the nightclub, which is like um, a, 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 in the bar at the back of the ship where you can actually dance under the stars uh, in, in La Palette uh, bar. That's La Palette, yeah. So like the picture down left, this is in the evening, it can be uh, turned into a dance floor, but of course you can dance inside um, as well. Really nice area. I would say on Paul Gauguin, there is a little bit more dancing than on the other Ponant ships, a little bit more entertainment, um, like similar to our itineraries we have in the Mediterranean with Ponant, like which are also a little bit more with uh, dance evenings. Um. The water sports equipment, so you will receive uh, your snorkeling equipment, so fins, mask, and snorkel. Uh, as Laura was saying, there is a scuba diving school on board. Okay. So you can do your DSD, you can dive with certified um, like dive, dive master, dive instructors. And then yeah. there, there is a huge variety of staterooms and suites. You see a few from the owner suite, um, all are outside staterooms. 85% um, have a balcony and um, you can see a few, um, a few slides of the different staterooms. There are many, many different categories, I would say. Uh, it depends what you really um, wish to, to, to have from um, the balcony, just window. That is like the first category. So, but you will be a lot outside anyway, so. And, and yeah. Fred, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we kept, we refurbished the ship not so long ago, and we kept all the wood, all these elements that are really uh, making also that connection with, with the, the, the local uh, areas, right? That is correct. I would say it's a very good combination uh, between what the ship already had, meaning all the, the more traditional wood style uh, staterooms. Um, and we added, I would say, the Ponant touch uh, three years ago um, by adding a little bit more Ponant style furniture and uh, renewing all the carpets, the staterooms, but not the wooden part. So mm. uh, I, I would say like the, the Paul Gauguin Museum has been um, also uh, changed a little bit like uh, for the better. And uh, yes, she, she, she looks very neat uh, as, a, mm. uh, as a ship, yes, yes. So we were talking. Me how, how I would summarize, uh, if, if, if we can summarize, it's hard, huh? Uh, the USPs of French Polynesia and Paul Gauguin. So clearly, the Paul Gauguin, the Gauguin and the Gauguin, it's, it's one of, of the, the key highlights on the local uh, Taijian entertainers. But clearly, we also have the service. Uh, this is this is amazing, uh, and the, the the feedbacks. And I'm sure uh, when you were on board, uh, Fred, you had so many great feedbacks. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is quite uh, quite something. Um, we do say long time on ports, so as mentioned by Fred as well, uh, you have plenty of time to discover, to do all the activities. Um, so this is also something that, uh, that we do really well, knowing also where to go and to maximize your time. And this is also just a quick reminder of, you should go and, and discover those islands, inlands as well. These are the fruits, these are the colorful, uh, flowers, you can go on hikes and maybe on the hikes you can find like some mangoes right on the floor and you take them, you eat them. This is something I was doing when I was going back from school to my, my own place uh, back in those days. But clearly the deck space is also something uh, to mention and you mentioned La Palette. Uh, imagine dancing uh, uh, below stars and so on. And, and, uh, and this is another picture of it. And I will also say the exclusive uh, retreats that we mentioned, the Bora Bora retreats, the Marquesas, those are, and the pri private Mutu, uh, Tahaa and private islands, uh, mm -hmm. those are also something really exclusive to Paul Gauguin and uh, making sure that you are actually discovering French Polynesia. So this is, uh, as just mentioned, the Mahana uh, Mutu, private island, and the Bora Bora private beach, uh, so again, uh, imagine yourselves there, the massage table, the food, the fruits, uh, the drinks, things <laughs> and, and so on. So this is just a nice picture that uh, that you can have and, and, and keep in memory. Um, yeah. 
Um, I like the fact the that you talked about the... Yes, yeah, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Laura. I was saying, I, was saying, uh, I liked uh, the fact that you talked about Motumahana, and it's also a place where uh, can be organized celebration, like uh, re renewal of bow for um, um, weddings. So yes. some couples come there and the captain uh, renew their vows and it's uh, usually a very emotional uh, experience and very intimate also with just the cruise director and the captain. Yes, and and the setting is 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 you won't forget that moment. You know, it's it's very romantic. Oh no, here. for sure, yeah. yes. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 not it's not official wedding. You know, it's most it's it's no, more it's like not a official Las wedding. Las Vegas style. But still, it's yeah. it's very emotional and very beautiful, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way very the way emotional. it's done with the music, with the traditional, yeah. Like again, the Gauguin, the Gauguins. Uh, Everything is is, nice. is is uh, and they have uh, that expertise for 25 years organizing these these events and these celebrations. Yeah. So they know how to do things clearly. Uh, I I just want I just wanted to go back because uh, or I can just mention it now. Uh, Paul Gauguin is not only for, for lovers, for honeymooners. It's also very uh, popular among families, friends. So, for example, I've seen on board quite a lot of multi-generations. So you've got like the grandparents or the parents and the, and the kids that are a little bit like older, I would say. Kids are welcome on board. Um, there is one stateroom for disabled guests, but it's going to be a little bit hard if you are in a wheelchair to get off the ship. It's not... Uh, as as convenient, so but there is there is one stateroom for disabled guests, and um, there are uh, some departures as well uh, for single travelers. We're going to talk about it as well. So um, that would be, and all of that is is going to be done within respect of local communities, local heritage. Um, this is also some pillars that Pono is is, is really proud of uh, globally as a family. Uh, and we do have that uh, that as well uh, with with Paul Gauguin. So few Pono advantages. So you can benefit from referrals, and you can do and, and those referrals. You will have also a welcome offer uh, for the first time. If you if it's the first time you will cruise with us, uh, it can be Pono, it can be Paul Gauguin. Also solo guests, as just mentioned by Fred, are, are more than welcome and. Um, and uh, and some uh, some departure dates are available at no single supplement. Um, so and you will also enjoy not a single cabin but just a normal double cabin. So we won't put you next to the machine. Huh? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> you will have exactly the same uh, the same experience as as the others. We just wanted to give you a few contacts here. Um, so you have the bookings at ponant.com. You do have also uh, that uh, website that we can only uh, encourage you to to go uh, and wa uh, and watch, and also uh, you can take a note of that uh, number. You will then call uh, some uh, some of our team uh, who are based in Marseille and who speaks uh, perfect English and who knows really well uh, Paul Gauguin. Um, I let you uh, uh, do the last slide, uh, Fred. Yes, so um, by attending this webinar, you have an exclusive offer of a discount of 5%, valid for one month on all the new bookings of a, of a cruise. And um, so from tomorrow, the recording of this webinar is going to be uh, av available. We're going to send you the link with, uh, with that uh, recording. And there will be another webinar uh, on uh, the beginning of December this year about the polar region and uh, the icebreaker, Le Commandant Charcot. And um, we have also a loyalty program status match, meaning that you have, if you have a loyalty program with another line, we're going to, to match it also um, with your uh, Ponant or Paul Gauguin uh, voyage. And? Well, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is one of, uh, one of the most beautiful words, in, uh, in my opinion, uh, in, in French Polynesian, because the you are OU. Uh, and the R are just not R, but R. So if you make yeah. it right, it's like super, uh, super nice. So Maururu uh, could be a, a sample of it, but I'm quite sure that I'm not uh, that great. Uh, how would you say this, uh, Laura? Maururu. 
Mauro, <laughs> yes. So that's a big thing to you. Uh, from, from us. And of course, we we had also the team uh, answering questions at the uh, on the on the back office. But if you do still have some questions, uh, we'll keep being here for a few minutes, uh, and uh, more than happy to to answer those. Uh, on my end, I just wanted to add uh, one little story. Uh, so on those uh, paths, so I was on an island uh, that are on the barrier reef, and I was not scuba diving, uh, but some currents were uh, going through that path. Um, and one of the best memory I, I still have till today from my 10 years in French Polynesia is just walking as close as possible to the reef, jumping on the water, and letting me go through, thanks to the current, without any efforts, just above the coral. And I've seen so many fishes, so, and it is, it's just, it's marvelous. So honestly, this is, this is something uh, I will remember my whole life, and I'm dying to have it again and experience this again. And I'm sure Fred or, or, or Laura or both can share some stories <laughs> yes. similar to this with as many passion as, as, as I am. Go ahead, Laura. For me, I think it's uh, being uh, on the on the bridge of Folgoga in the morning when we reach to a new island. Yes, with the passengers around and uh, all sharing the moment to reach a new island every next morning. That's that's a great feeling with the coffee in your hand. You know, just enjoying the dolphins. That's yeah. my best experience. Yeah, and for for me, it would be the people. Like you know how nice they are the humor, the smile, how welcoming they are. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, they are genuine people. They are really, really nice. You know, there are still some really nice people around this world. <laughs> and the culture, you know, the, the, this is a culture that didn't have any, nothing belonged to anyone. Every tree, every fruit, every vegetable, everything was for the community it was never they didn't have a sense of belonging so um i think they they, they keep this very strong uh, culture mm -hmm. and um and and beautiful human beings definitely yes yes i think people are, yeah. are, are are amazing in french polynesia definitely i wanted to say that thank you very much to vladislav and charlotte because you are answering quite a few questions online um yeah. I've, I've seen uh, a few Questions like, when is the rainy season? I would say during our winter, from my experience, we had a little bit more rain uh, around February, but not always, it depends. But I would say like from November to, uh, to March, you will have uh, a little bit more rain that, than in the summer than the other. Um, um, Susan, yes, um, on the second day, there is a get together with all the, all the people that are traveling alone. So, um, so before, before the, the gala evening on the second day, you can already meet some other solo travelers. And there are a lot of solo travelers on board. Yes. So um, again, the Gauguin and Gauguin are going to make sure, and the Metro D, of course, but they are going to make, and then you meet a lot of people during the tours and the activities as well. So yes, you will make friends. And the atmosphere is absolutely amazing. Yes. It's laid back. Don't, don't, don't expect it to be, um, a tie and, and, and a tuxedo in the evening. That's not the idea of Paul Gauguin, right? Mm -hmm. It's elegant, yes. Um, a shirt um, and a jacket for the gala evening, yes, maybe. Uh, for the ladies, the ladies are always beautiful. I don't need to mention anything. Um, oh. but, uh, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, and the crew also, you know, the atmosphere that the captain, the cruise director, the hotel director, they bring you will feel that is like a really friendly atmosphere, elegant, but very friendly. Yeah. I hope I answered your question, Susan. Mm -hmm. Any yes, the atmosphere more? on board the ship is great. Yes. Especially ah, because um, there are a lot of uh, people coming back as well, passengers coming back again and again. They know the ship, you know. Yes, um, I have a question about do you cater for a special um, requirement for, for meals? such as gluten-free and so on. So yes, of course, when you book your voyage, you just mentioned, and then the Metro D will take good care of you um, once you are on board. And uh, there are, of course, vegetarian options and uh, gluten-free and uh, 
you can uh, you can talk to uh, to uh, I mean say it in advance so we have it in your file you know when you book your voyage and then once on board the Metro D will uh, will take good care of um, of you yes um, yeah I think that's it right yes what do you think <laughs> but we don't want to be too long I mean um, if you have questions you know just call your travel agency or uh, call us at the uh, Paul at Ponon, and then we will make sure we answer all your um, all your questions. Again, this is a voyage you have to do once in your life. It's yes. it's a trip of a lifetime. Yes. It's re it's really really nice. I, I always say really really nice, but yeah, that is a <laughs> that is a fantastic uh, voyage. And and doing it on a ship will be cheaper for you than doing it on land and hopping by plane and changing with your luggage oh, from yeah, one hotel sure. to the other. So it's better to stay on board the ship and do all these islands. At the end, it will be cheaper because French Polynesia can be expensive when you are in hotels, the meals, the drinks, and so on. Day after day, it can add up really, really fast. So it is much cheaper to do a cruise than, um, than hopping from one, one island to the other. And you see more. As well, you see yes. more. It's like and, you are you have your overwater bungalow on board the ship. You know, it's a moving underwater overwater bungalow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and less stress also. You just come on the ship, and the, everybody takes care of you at any moment. <laughs> yes. You just have to get in on the ship, and then everything is ready for you. Yes. <laughs> so thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, should uh, should we say Maururu? Uh, Maururu, thank you. Uh, Maururu. Maururu, everyone. And uh, see you very soon uh, on board. Thanks, yeah. Fred. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Vlad. So, Thanks, Charlotte. Thank you very much. Maururu. Thank you very much. Maururu. <laughs>